Hello everybody! This is our video solution to problem 2 from Quiz 12, Spring 2023, Math 302 at Cal State Fullerton. In this problem, we are looking at a ring, and it's as generic as could be. We don't know if it's commutative, we don't know if it has a, um, an identity, meaning a multiplicative identity. Uh, but, uh, of course, as a ring, it does have an additive identity, and for some bizarre reason, uh, we're calling it A in this problem. Uh, we also have some generic element x in R, and we want to show that if I multiply the additive identity A by this generic element x, we will get back the additive identity A. So there's sort of a two-step process typically that you would do for this, but I'm going to show you just like the one-line proof for this. All right, so I can start with A, and I know that I because a is the additive identity, I can get it by looking at the difference between a times x and a times x, right? If you subtract an element from itself, you get the additive identity. Okay, uh, but I can now take this a, it's the additive identity, and I can break it up as a plus a, that's right. <laughs> it's the additive identity, so you can put two copies. doesn't change anything. Okay, but now I can distribute this x, and I get a times x plus a times x minus a times x. All right, but I'm in a ring, so I can use associativity, and I can rewrite this as a times x plus a times x minus a times x. I can now take this first a, say, and break it up as a plus a, because a is the additive identity. So I can write this as a plus a times x minus a times x. Now I'm in a ring, so I can distribute, and I get a times x plus a times x, and then I still have minus a times x. Again, I'm in a ring, I have associativity, so I can rewrite this as a times x plus a times x minus a times x. Ah, and this bit here is equal to the additive identity. So I can now write this as a times x plus a, but adding the additive identity does nothing, and so this is a times x. And so if we look at the beginning and at the end, we see that a times x is equal to a. There we go. Now, uh, this is in some ways too clever, right? Like it works, it's a one line proof, you don't have to do stuff. Let me show you sort of the typical two line proof then. So in the two line version, you first make the following observation. So, uh, it, and it, you'll see it, it's sort of similar to what we did in this proof here. So if I have a times x, I can write this as a plus a times x, which is equal to a times x plus a times x. Now I can add the additive inverse of a times x to both sides. So I'll get uh, a times x minus a times x is equal to a times x plus a times x minus a times x. And now as before I use associativity, write this as a times x plus a times x uh, minus a times x. This difference is just equal to a so I get a times x plus a, but a is the additive identity, so you get a times x. And you look over here, I'm subtracting these, this is equal to a. And so again, a is equal to a times x. So somehow this feels more natural, right? Uh, probably because this is very, like there's two clever tricks in this one liner, right? Obviously it's the same cleverness of writing a is a plus a, but then this cleverness of writing a is a times x minus a times x, right? Maybe that's just too much for all at once. All right, in any case, uh, maybe you find a third way, put it in the comments, all right? Maybe a fourth, maybe a fifth. Actually, there's a lot of ways to do this, so. All right, we'll see everybody next time.